This is Larry. Hi, Larry. Hello. How are you? Fine as always. Good. Glad to hear it. Been thinking about you. Yes, it is. Always the same here. Yeah. Happy. Happy and joyful. Yeah. We're looking forward to that. Experiencing that again. May, did you have a message today? Or, do, or can I ask you questions? Or should we do both? I just came in to talk. You can ask any question you want. Okay. I was curious. I have so many questions. I don't know if we'll be able to get to them all. Do you remember a time when I was first practicing regressing Travis and we talked to someone named Micah? And I think Micah was... I have it written down as his subconscious. Yes, my guy is his subconscious. Okay. The subconscious is not like the higher self, like me. The subconscious is part of the human brain. It is literally a person that occupies the body, the subconscious is almost like you say an angel and the devil on your shoulders. Yes. That's what your subconscious is. It helps you make decisions. Oh. It doesn't give you the answers. It's just there for you to decide on your own. So your subconscious is always there. The subconscious usually, as you say, argues with the ego. The okay. ego tries to take over. The ego usually pushes you to do things really fast without thinking so your subconscious is the one that kicks in that makes you think before you make decisions <laughs> before you do something crazy maybe or before you do what the ego says is that what you mean the subconscious usually kicks in before you make any decision but the ego tries to kick in to override it. Okay. It could be a good thing or a bad thing. It's not always bad when the ego kicks in. Sometimes right. the ego kicks in and it helps you. Yeah. If you're trying to make a decision, sometimes it could be a good decision and you might not know, but your ego might know and he might try to kick in and help you. Okay. So, okay. the ego is not a bad thing all the time, uh -huh. just sometimes. The subconscious is the one that helps. Okay. None of them are ever wrong, though, because uh -huh. even if you make a decision and it gives you problems, like we say, that does not matter because you can fix the problem. Okay. Nothing <clears throat> can never not be fixed. So it doesn't matter what decision you make. Either way, it will come out good because you have the power to fix it. Okay. So what part of the body does the subconscious control? I remember you explained that in the brain. 
you tell me again? It helps the cerebral cortex. Okay. Does it help with, like, movement of the body? No, the subconscious is only for thinking. It does not affect the nervous system. I remember having an explanation of, uh, it was like different parts of the brain. And what each one did, but I can't remember. Maybe I can just look up that. It helps the critical thinking of the brain, but it doesn't help with the movement. The movement is your soul itself that helps oh. it move. Oh, wow. Your soul is connected to the cerebral cortex and when you think of what you want to do, then your body moves. Okay. So there are more parts than we kind of usually talk about. It is very, 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 in your words, complicated. Yeah. Even a lot of scientists that think they know how everything works, they only know the basic things. Yeah. They are not always correct. So even in doing hypnosis, we're not always, huh? Because, you know, in the beginning, we used to call him the subconscious, but I know, I know that that was just a word that Dolores used because she didn't know what else to call it. That was the easiest thing to call it. Yeah. But it would be more the higher self that we talk to or? Yes. Okay. Yes. It is very complicated. It is, yes. No one will ever know what it is okay. until they cross over. Even the so-called doctors down there, I think they know everything about the brain, but they do not. They know how to fix certain parts of the brain. Okay. But as far as supernatural, as you call it, or very spiritual things, they have not a clue because okay. scientists do not believe in supernatural things. They think everything is physical yes. and in the human body. Yes, yes, that's true. Yes. I was, you know, watching, of course, <laughs> Bashar, he was talking about, uh, first he was talking about um, some sacred, sacred circuitry. I don't know if that is just from his people or not. But he was also talking about, in that same session, uh, synchronizing your heart with someone else's heart and helping them to go into a state of hypnosis, I think. Yes. Can we do that? Is oh, yes. The main people that can really do it are empaths. Empaths can do it easier because they can feel what the other person is feeling. Yeah. So if you can feel that the other person is panicking, yes. you have the words to calm them down. You can even tell them that you are inside their heart and you are going to help them calm down. And they will hear that and they will calm down. That is the sacred symmetry he was talking about. Everyone can do it if they put their minds and hearts to it. And they really have to believe they can do it. Mm -hmm. If it... you believe you can do it, then it will work. Okay. And that doesn't have to be in a session because you're kind of putting them into hypnosis. Right? Yes. Okay. You can do that even just by talking to someone. Oh my goodness. Even if it's not an in-depth session like you are doing right now, right. if you're talking to someone that is having a problem, you can talk to them like they're in a session mm -hmm. and it will work. Sometimes you would even put them under when they don't even know it. Is that how some therapist hypnosis 
um, therapists or practitioners are able to help people yes. so quickly? Yes. Okay. And some of what you call your psychiatrists have uh-huh. learned the talent of doing that as well. And they don't even know it. Uh-huh. They think they're just doing their job. They have no idea that they put someone under hypnosis and wow. got them telling them all of their problems and secrets. Right. They have no idea that they are doing a hypnosis session. They think they are just doing a regular psychiatrist uh-huh. session. So they have no idea that they are also hypnotic practitioners and they have no idea. Amazing. So this could really change how we do things yes. to help people. Because I think he was saying, if I remember right, that that was a way to get the information to anchor in quickly and, and deeply. Mm-hmm. Is that right? Yes. Wow. And that is what we call, in our humorous way up here, <laughs> lightening up. Which is what he always says, yes. <laughs> the first step, what does he say? The first step to enlightenment is to lighten up. Yes. Yes. Do you agree with that? Yes. Okay. We gave that to him. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Well, that's awesome. If I... um start doing that will you can you guide me yes i will thank you so much so you would just talk to them slowly like like conversational hypnosis yes exactly the way you're speaking to me right now i see okay and then would i imagine our hearts synchronizing yes Okay. You see it in your head. Uh-huh. And you picture going into the other person's heart. Uh-huh. You feel their heartbeat and you speak your words of encouragement. Yeah. It will always work. Okay. I've wondered how some hypnosis practitioners have such a talent, you know. <clears throat> that sounds like it would really, really help people. It will always A lot of people are under stress. Mm -hmm. And that is the way to get them to relax and really think about what they need to do next to improve their lives. Okay. Now, is there anything else that you can tell me about taking a person deeper into hypnosis or do I need to find that on my own? You do what I just told you to do with the heart. Okay. And that will work just as good. Just as well. Okay. If they say they see something Mm -hmm. and it seems like they're getting hesitant, Mm -hmm. you tell them that they are really seeing what they're seeing. They are not making it up. Their ego is trying to tell them they are making it up. Yeah. But they are not making it up. You also tell them that their ego is not a negative thing. Their ego tries to protect them Mm -hmm. and their ego is part of them. Their ego is not us. Their ego is them. Right. Their ego is their critical thinking area Mm -hmm. that tries to protect them so they won't so-called look like a fool. Yes. They don't want to look kind of, like a fool, so they're scared to say what they are seeing. Yeah, I've had a few clients do that, but I did notice that when I tell them I, I'm seeing what you're seeing, that helps them. And yes. They start talking. That is exactly right. Yeah, okay. okay. And you do see what they're seeing. That is your <laughs> gift. So you also realize your talent. You have overridden your ego because if your Mm -hmm. ego was in the way, you would not see what they were seeing and you would not tell them that you were seeing what they are seeing because you do not want to look like a fool or sound like a fool. But you are sure that you are seeing what you see and you are correct because you have a gift of sight. You have a gift 
of overridden sight where you can see what they see and you can let them know what they're seeing is the truth. That is a huge gift. Thank you. I am very excited to use that and to help people. Thank you. A lot of practitioners have that and they are afraid to let the person know that they see what they are seeing. But they shouldn't be afraid. Okay. They are practitioners. Mm -hmm. Let them know what you are seeing. You are not coaching them into seeing what they want to see. No. If they see something and you see the same thing they do, you are connected to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Therefore, you are not making it up as well. You are both seeing the same thing. Right. So use that to help them. Right, because you're not giving them the answers. No, you are not giving them the answers. You're just confirming. If you sense that they're worried, then you could use that to confirm. Exactly. Okay, so should I share this with other practitioners? Yes. Okay. Absolutely, because a lot of them are hesitant. Yeah, I think it comes from not wanting to lead and... Yeah. Yes. And I can understand by not wanting to lead anyone. Mm -hmm. But you are not leading them. Okay. You see what they see and you are connected to them. Okay. Every practitioner must understand that they are not leading. Okay. They are guiding them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You are guiding them. Yeah. Now, I've been thinking a lot lately about the idea that Bashar also says of changing your past to change your now moment and your future. Is that something that could or should be done in hypnosis or, or not? You can do it because it doesn't matter because your past Mm -hmm. is your past nothing you will do will change your past right. but right. it will change your past in your present right. if someone says they were so called messed with or mm -hmm. has something bad happen to them and it affect them their whole life right. you can get them to so-called forget about that so it doesn't affect their lives right now. Right. That way they can go on with their lives and they won't even remember the past because they do not need to remember the past because the past has nothing to do with your present or your future. Right. It's like the past memories that we have that are sometimes uh, have a negative mm, connotation with them. Yes, and those negative connotations takes over your ego. Right. Your ego will keep you from doing things that will progress your life because your ego remembers the past right. and your ego tries to protect you. It is not the ego's fault. It is just protection. Mm -hmm. But sometimes the ego keeps you from progressing. Right. So you have to coach the ego not to be so protective over you. Mm -hmm. You can coach your ego. The way to coach your ego, if your ego thinks something negative, mm -hmm. then you use your so-called angel on your shoulder and say everything will be fine mm -hmm. because everything can be fixed and your ego will listen and your ego will not protect you so hardly and let you make your own decisions and everything will be perfect okay so if somebody said my past was traumatizing is that the other happened the thing that i've been hearing or learning is that what bashar is saying is you tell yourself that was another person 
It was another person. Because it was another person. <laughs> because you change, what is it, how many times per second? I can't remember. Yes, because if you were a child when it happened, mm -hmm. you are not a child now. Mm -hmm. So therefore, you should not be affected by it. Right. You are old enough to protect yourself. That child could not. Mm -hmm. And the person that did that to you was in your contract that you signed before you came down here. Right. So you already knew it was going to happen before you came down here. Right. Therefore, you should easily be able to forget about it because it was in your contract. That's what you wanted to happen. Fortunately, it doesn't sound so good when you say that, but that is exactly what you did before you came down here. Yeah. A lot of people wonder, why would I want that to happen to me? Well, when you're up here with us and you make that contract, you know why. You know it's something you have to learn. You have to learn something, mm -hmm. to go through something, and you agree to that contract, and it happened. Once you realize that, all the pain will go away. Wow. I was listening uh, to another method of changing your past, to, which will change your present, which was writing your life story and acting it out like maybe three times I think he said there's it's more in depth than I'm explaining but um, that seems like it would be a another way you could that, do that is another way okay. a lot of people will not be able to do that because the ego kicks in and they do not want to look ridiculous right but it will work so if you can get over your fear of looking ridiculous, it would work. Exactly. Okay. You have to not care what anyone thinks yeah. and just do it. You do not have to do it that way. Right. You can also do that in your mind. No one has to be there to see it. You can convince yourself that you have an audience and do it oh. for yourself as well. Uh -huh. The way to do it with real people is the super, super extreme way to do it. Right. And it will work faster if you do it that way. Uh -huh. But you can also do it in your own mind if you're too shy or too scared yeah. to do it. Okay. Well, yeah. so many people... Not, not right now. Uh, yeah, who is someone else coming through? His higher self was trying to come in. Oh, and okay. I told him, not right now. Um, yeah, I've just been trying to think of ways to heal myself and others. And those seem like things that people don't really know about. That would be so helpful. I was wondering also, is it true about uh, th that we, as we change our, our life to what we want it to be, the people that are still living their lives in different ways, we can see them through uh, like a supposed glass uh, wall. So, mm. so that those things don't affect us? Yes. Okay. That is the way your husband sees his life. That's why nothing affects him. That is the best way to describe it. Okay. If someone is giving you negative energy, you picture them outside of a glass wall uh -huh. talking to you, yes. and you can barely hear them. So that way, <laughs> if you can't hear them, then it's not going to bother you. <laughs> They are on the outside of the glass. The only way they can get inside of your glass, if you let them in, and the only way you're going to let them in, if they are positive. If they are not positive, then they will stay outside of the glass. Yes. Is this kind of what Source told me to create? Yes. Okay. That is almost like the glass that is around your planet and other planets. That's why we are outside of the glass, and you are inside of the glass, which is also what you call the matrix 
Okay. You are inside of the matrix, so you have all of the negative energy trapped inside. Right. So you have to use all of your power mm -hmm. to block that. And the way to do it is to put a glass box around you mm -hmm. to keep your positive energy inside. That way no one can even touch you mm -hmm. because you are inside your light glass box. So no matter what anyone says to you, it is not going to get through. Mm -hmm. You can even repel the negative energy. If someone calls you a name, you say, thank you. Mm -hmm. And they will be so confused. <laughs> That's great. They would not know how to take it because you repel that negative energy. Right. Yeah, you don't get sucked into it and uh, call them a name back. Exactly. Is it true that as we keep doing that, the, those, uh, <laughs> what we see through those walls will fade away and we'll think, oh, the, the earth got better, the world got better. Yes. But that we, is exactly but, it. But it's actually us who who got better. Or it is you that has gotten better. Or changed our You vibration. getting better and helping everyone else get better helps the negative energy in the world get better. It pushes it away. So we would eventually say, oh, wow, the earth is so much better than it used to be. But really, we've changed and we don't know the difference. Exactly. Because we can't see it anymore. Exactly. If you okay. don't take offense to anything, then it bounces off of you. Oh, wow. People will try to knock you down. But like I said, if they say something and they know they're trying to push your buttons, mm -hmm. if you say, thank you, you made my day, it will totally confuse them <laughs> and they will leave you alone. Okay. Because they will not be able to touch you. Oh. I love all this. It's so good. Such good information. That goes with everything in life. Even yeah. if you are trying to succeed at something, mm -hmm. you will get a lot of no's, mm -hmm. but that doesn't matter because they always come back. <laughs> and you know that they because do. it happened. Yeah. Oh, yes. Which you have a few more in store that is coming. Really? That is a little clue. That is all I am going to get. Okay. Okay. Um, I had a question about my tooth. My tooth that was uh, very, well, it felt like it was abscessed. It's, it's broken, actually. And all of a sudden, it stopped hurting. And it was hurting badly. You willed it to stop hurting. Did I? Okay. I wanted to make sure. You are a Figuring out really... how to heal yourself. Oh, my goodness. It is still a good idea to go to what you call your dentist yeah. just to check it out. I think so, because it's broken. But... but you figured out how to heal yourself. You can oh, do that with everything. Gosh, I'm so glad. I thought I did, and then, I, you know, it's nice to hear it. And you it. did certain things to make it go away. You know exactly how to make it go away now. You yeah. thought it was kind of weird how that happened just by doing that I one did. simple thing. But just keep doing that and it would always go away. That will work with everything. Yes, I, I didn't think about it a lot, lot. And that's why it surprised me. Maybe, I don't know, why, why would that happen? Is it... That that's the way it's supposed to happen. Okay, okay. You did it and it worked. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter why it happened or how it happened. Okay. You did it and it worked. And for people who want, there are a lot of people right now who want to have gifts and abilities. What would you say to them today? If you feel like something is different, if you see certain things that happened before they happen, you have a gift. Anything that's out of the ordinary within your life and it's making other people feel better or making you feel better, mm -hmm. that is a gift. Even if you see so-called future events, which those events can totally change because the timelines are always changing, that is still a gift. Mm -hmm. You have to... 
You have to embrace those gifts because it is part of you. Mm. You don't have to tell anyone about them if you don't want to. But you have to know you have them. Yeah. I noticed one of my clients is having the same gifts that I am. And she said she was she thought she was going crazy. <laughs> um, she was seeing the light in her mind. Yes, that is. Yeah. That is a gift. Actually, everyone so has that gift, but they tend to ignore it. Everyone has that gift. But some of them don't know what it is. Some of them misinterpret it for all kinds of things. Some misinterpret it as them going blind or something. They think they might have cataracts or something. So they go to an eye doctor and they have nothing wrong with their eyes. Mm -hmm. So they're just totally confused. But now they should know it is a gift. Yes. And is that why you tell me, <clears throat> I remember what you told me when I uh, meditate to think of a very bright light. Is that why? Yes. Okay. When you meditate, think of a very bright light and usually other images will pop in. Right. And that's when you're going under. Yeah. You're pretty much doing your own session on yourself. Right. You're pretty much putting yourself under. Yeah. That is pretty much what meditation is. Uh -huh. It is putting yourself under. Yeah. And if you start seeing things, that is either part of a past life or you could be just astral traveling and seeing something somewhere else. Oh, it's yeah. one or the other. None of it is fake. It is all real. Yes. Um, is there a way to learn to astral travel? Or is it just something... I think there are some people that teach it, aren't there? You just relax in a quiet room. Sometimes people like to hear sounds. Mm -hmm. And you think of absolutely nothing. Nothing. And whatever visions pop up in your head, you follow those visions. Oh. And that's how you astral travel. You are not thinking when you are meditating. If you're thinking when you're meditating, then you are not meditating. Oh, yeah, right. right. If you're meditating and you are going down a tunnel, uh -huh. and you say, I want to go that way. Uh -huh. That is just your imagination. Because when you are meditating, you are not thinking. Uh, you just yeah. go in a direction where it takes you. Right, right. You don't make the decision of which way you want to go. Okay. If you are making the decisions where you want to go, then you are not meditating. When okay. you're meditating and astral traveling, you go wherever it takes you. Mm -hmm. And wherever you end up, that's where you are. Okay. Um, now I just got some sound bowls, or some, sorry, singing bowls, <laughs> singing bowls. How do those help us to relax? The sound, uh -huh. the vibration from anything helps you meditate and astral travel. You can literally... Be sitting in a vibrating room with just vibrating sounds and it will help you astral travel. The bowls wow. will connect with your body. You listen to the sounds and think of absolutely nothing. Mm -hmm. And whatever comes up into <clears throat> your mind, then <clears throat> you are astral traveling. Okay. It doesn't matter what vision pops up. That's where you are. And you are not making it up. It is real. Right. You are not making it up. It is real. So the singing bowls vibrate with your body. That and you can feel sense. those vibrations in your ears, in your head, in your whole body. Mm -hmm. yes. You just listen. Yes. You listen to the sounds. You don't think of anything. You mm -hmm. just listen and see where it takes you. Those bowls also heal people. Yes. The vibrations will heal you as well. I heard that. Wow. 
They also use vibrations a long time ago on your planet to levitate things. Okay. That is how your so-called pyramids were built. They were not built with any kind of human hands. Those blocks are absolutely way too big for anyone to lift. Right. They use vibration technology. And the vibration technology is not really technology. It is sold technology. You can call it technology because it helps build things, mm -hmm. but it's just the way things are in the soul realm here. And they figured out how to use those vibrations to lift. They have found out how to do that now in your science technology, but they can only lift little small pebbles. Okay. They need really super huge machines to lift concrete or any big boulders. Wait, is that because they're missing a part of it? or They're missing lots of parts of it. Yeah. Eventually they will f f f figure it out. So when they move the pyramid blocks, well, can you can you do that with your voice at all? That was part of it. They okay. had big, giant what you call speakers. Uh -huh. Sometimes they used voices. Sometimes they used the singing bowls. That what you call. Oh wow! They had. Really, 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 really big ones, and they had machines to make the vibrations, and the vibrations would pick up the blocks. But they would use poles mm -hmm. to push the blocks where they wanted them to sit. Yeah, I was wondering how they moved move them. They would levitate with the sounds, and they would use them okay. to move them up in the air, and they would use the Holes or any other kind of instrument to place the blocks where they wanted them to go. Wow. That was the only man power that they used uh -huh. was to push the blocks into place. Wow. They had some machines that helped them push them into place as well. And that information on how that was done is obviously is not there or it isn't there anywhere in Egypt. No, because when the original beings that built those left the planet, they took their machines mm -hmm. with them. That's why when they so-called excavate those places, they only find things made of stone. Right. They won't find any metal artifacts or anything. Or, well, the gold, the gold on the tops of the pyramids was taken away too, right? Was it, it was a crystal on top oh, of the pyramid. The, the but, crystals, yeah. crystals was the one that originated oh the gosh. power. But they will never yeah. find any machinery because they took it all with them. And they did that on purpose because mm -hmm. they knew that the people that were on the planet right now will try to use things like that to make weapons and mm. other things because... The beings on your planet always want to be, as you say, the top dog in there. Mm -hmm. Always wanting huh. to fight. They're pretty far from the top dog, I think. Um, that's why it's kind of amusing. They are not the top dog. No. There are other beings that are more powerful, which is why right. they keep trying to hide those beings from your so-called public. Because they know... It will cause a collapse. Oh, why? The humans on your planet are very fragile. They don't like to be called that, but um, mm -hmm. they are. They are fragile because they mm -hmm. knew there were other beings out there, which most people know, but the majority of your planet do not believe in other beings because it's been hidden from them. Mm -hmm. And if they find out they are, it will collapse the whole religion complex. Mm -hmm. And it will co it will collapse your so-called governments because everyone will soon know that they are not in charge of everything. It is other beings that can totally take over. And that will just scare everyone. 
That is why it is taking so long for everything to come out because they are scared of collapse. People will literally just give up on everything. Really? They will not go to work. Oh my god. Because they will be angry for <clears throat> one because they were fooled for years and years about this and they'll be very angry that their governments knew about it and did not tell them about it. Mm -hmm. And that would have to be the real the real ETs explaining it in a way that the government, not, not the fake thing that they have. I don't know if they still have that planned or not. But. It is bound to happen eventually because you cannot keep anything secret forever. Right. But that would not be a bad thing because that will be the thing that will help this whole planet enlightened. Uh -huh. They will be angry at first because they hate it that they, they are being fooled this, mm -hmm. all these years like hundreds of years they have been fooled about this right and the government's been keeping everyone trapped mm -hmm. and you are unfortunately slaves mm -hmm. everyone on your planet is slaves because they are all in a grid they are all having to make currency just to live when it shouldn't be that way. Everyone should be able to live lives where they don't have to go to work mm -hmm. to live. Right. Everyone should be able to be with their families and have fun every day, all day, mm -hmm. without having to work just to, 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 to super, survive. Mm -hmm. But yeah. that will all be coming to an end. And of course, I can't tell you when, <laughs> but it is. Yeah. And everyone will be happier because no one will have to work to survive. The yeah. only ones that will be angry about it are the ones that were in charge forever. Okay. But even they won't have any power to stop anything. Because even their so-called military would not cooperate. They can wow. be as mad as they want, but even the military will say, no, we are not doing that. Wow. Because they had control over the military as well. Right. And the military will also be angry. Every military on every country will be angry. And they will refuse to do what they are told. Is that why you need more people? I mean, I know you've told me you need us to wake up to help with the Flash. But is it also to help with that? Um, or can you tell me? In reality, it doesn't matter. Uh-huh how many people we get to help because once the flash happens that's true yeah everyone will kick in there will be some that will may not be able to help there is not a certain number of people that needs to be yeah but we do want as many people to be awakened before it happened not the fact that it'll make it easier but it's just the fact that that is the way it should be mm-hmm it's well, going to be that way eventually anyway. Right. But it's just nice to have everyone awaken before. Well, we'll be happier, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, I was going to ask, how does the sun help to awaken us? The sun? The sun's energy. The sun has a lot of energy in it. Mm -hmm. That helps people. You Laying out in the sun is not necessarily good for you because on your planet, when it comes through your planet, it causes what you call cancer. Mm -hmm. If the planet wasn't the way it was, then it wouldn't matter. It's good to have sunlight to help you have light. But actually laying out in it for hours is mm -hmm. not necessarily a good thing. Not a because most people do not feel good after they do that. They so-called oh. sunburn, yeah. which that is not good for your body. Right. But Only a certain amount of time in the sun is good for your body. But when it gets to the point where it starts to hurt, that is not, that is not good. Right. Um, so a little while would be okay? Like 15 minutes? Or would that be okay? In your time lineage, mm -hmm. the best is 20. 20? 
because you will still get the light that you need to make you feel better. But once you get past that point, you start getting hot and hurting. That is not good. You have to get up. Are there codes in the sun, like some people say? Light codes? Yes, there is light codes in the light. That's what makes you feel better, and it gives you extra light. It goes into your body. It goes into your soul, and it helps you feel good. When you get too much of it, it has a reverse reaction. It makes you hurt. Right. And if you hurt, then it, that puts negative energy into you. Right. Because you, it hurts. Right. And I have to go, I have to backtrack here because there's something I forgot to ask you about nuclear war. Um, I know I've been told that that cannot happen on our planet because it would affect other people planets, other people, and that the codes have been turned off or changed or whatever before. Can it happen at all? Like it has already happened in another timeline. Uh -huh. That is why oh. the beings that can turn them off will not let it happen. So, so it has already happened. So if people are getting, say, uh, prim uh, well, what would it be, uh, channelings about upcoming events that are, that would be, um, I can't think, <laughs> bombs like that, um, nuclear bombs, is that seeing another timeline maybe? Those are usually, yes, from another timeline. Okay. Some of them are from past timelines that already happened. Right. Okay. okay. So when people get visions, the visions are not always visions of the future. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they are visions of the past. Mm -hmm. And the way to get them to tell you as if it's in the past is you ask them, what do the automobiles look like? Oh. What does this look like? Perfect. Because then you will get a definite answer. Because then they will have to tell you. They say, oh, well, the cars look kind of old. Yeah. Then you can just tell them that was from another timeline when the bombs actually went off. So I guess it depends who you're channeling. And yeah, you could ask them that. Yes, because there will never be another nuclear war. That is the thing about the timelines. We have all kinds of different beings all over the universe. And we have beings that figured out time travel. Mm -hmm. They figured out time travel. So they let the bombs go off the first time just to see what would happen. Mm hmm and when they saw that what could happen, they said, okay, well, we are never letting them shoot those off anymore. Mm -hmm. But your governments know that. The governments know that those beings can turn the bombs off. But they do not want the public to know that. Mm -hmm. They want the public to always be afraid mm -hmm. of other countries having nuclear weapons. When they know sure and well that they cannot ever shoot them off. They will never be able to shoot them off. Mm -hmm. There are always other countries they are trying to say, oh, they are trying to build a nuclear bomb, to sh which you know there is no way those things are ever going to be shot off. Mm -mm. So you should never be afraid of that saying anymore because okay. it's not ever going to happen. Okay. They are playing, as you say, war games. Yeah. They are trying to keep the public afraid. afraid. The way you do things on your planet is still very simple. Mm -hmm. You call your leaders on your planet world leaders. Yeah. They are not world leaders. <laughs> yeah. Because if they were leaders, 
you will be worshipping them. <laughs> Some people yeah. do worship their world yes. leaders, unfortunately. Do. You do a thing called where you vote. Right. You vote for a person to be in charge. Mm -hmm. Which most people don't know that those beings are not in charge. There is a secret government that is in charge. There is what you call puppets. Every leader in every country on your planet is what you call a puppet. Mm -hmm. They are there just for show. Yeah. The real ones that are in charge are not to be seen. They are the ones that are keeping everyone down. Mm -hmm. They are the ones that are keeping everyone enslaved, trying to keep currency just to live when it doesn't need to be that way. They are keeping the so-called alien being the secret so it doesn't crush your religious <sighs> your religious standards because mm -hmm. so, the bible does not say anything about other beings when they should mm -hmm. and they don't so that keeps everyone as you say dumb yeah everyone Unfortunately, it's held down and they believe in something that is not necessarily true. When your planet should be living fairly simple, just living life, having families and having fun. If you have fun, then you have light, but they don't want you to have fun. So you only have a limited amount of light because you're always angry because you're always trying to survive. Yeah, we're always having to go and do things that we don't really want to do a lot of the time. Some people are lucky and find things they love doing, but still. Even the ones that you call rich people. Uh -huh. Yes, they are happy they are not poor. Uh -huh. But they are still trying to fight to keep that money. Yeah. Because they never want to go back down to what right. you call your level. Yeah. So they're fighting to stay that <clears throat> way, which is almost harder for them because mm -hmm. they are paranoid that they would end up being back down into the lower level, mm -hmm. like where regular people are, <clears throat> what they call them, and they do not want to do that. So they are not very happy either. Yeah, I've seen that happen, um, you know, pretty quickly. If you take money away and no one has to depend on money, then everyone will be happy. So there are rich people that are not happy and there are regular yeah. people that are not happy. All because of currency. To stay alive. That is not a way to live. You are not living. Right. You are not living. Right. When you die, you will be living. Yes. Then right. you will be living. Or if we go to the flash. <laughs> Through the flash. When the flash comes, everyone will be living again. Yeah. Um, I know it's been a little while. Can I ask you a couple more questions? Yes. Okay. What causes... <clears throat> what is causing all of the illness on the earth right now? It's like, I know a girl who is very young. She... She got sick when she was like, I think, 14 with, um, they, they're calling it, you know, an immune disorder and then just many other things. And I know a lot of people like that. Yes. Why is that happening? The thing that is calling most of the illnesses is what I just said. Mm. People are almost giving up when they don't know it. And it's causing illnesses. People are striving so, to survive and they're giving up. They're yeah. giving up and we're trying to give them the light not to give up. When you put your body mm -hmm. in such strain mm -hmm. where you feel like giving up, that makes it easier for other diseases to get in. Your planet always have things floating around that can get into your body and make you sick. There are some that are caused by the powers that be, unfortunately, mm -hmm. but some are natural. 
When they get into your body, and if your body is already beaten up, it will eat the body and it will cause you to be sick. Usually people get better if they're super happy about something, they're always happy. Right. That is healing yourself as well. That is a way you can heal yourself as well. You don't have to concentrate to heal yourself. Mm -hmm. If you think positive all the time mm -hmm. and almost forget about your illness, that is healing yourself as well. Okay. That is healing yourself. So if you do that, then your pain will go away and your illness will go away. That's how some cancers go away. Some yeah. people can heal themselves with cancer. Yeah. If they just... Some people have cancer and they don't even feel sick. Right. But they make themselves sick because they keep saying they have cancer and feel sorry for themselves. And it makes right. the cancers grow bigger. If you totally forget about it and act like you don't have cancer and you don't feel anything, mm -hmm. it will go away. Okay. And then I have a question too. This girl has gained weight. I know, I know people of all ages who have had weight gain. I have had weight gain. If we want to have a more fit body, I know we can exercise and eat well. Can we also imagine that like we do ever, everything else to create our reality? Oh, yes. Okay. Um, your husband is doing that right now. He is. He's I see that you see weird. he is losing weight. Yes, I'm just. And he's pretty much eating the same thing. Yeah, yeah. But he does. He never thought. He thought he was bigger. Uh, but he didn't feel sorry for himself, and he didn't compare himself to anyone else. Okay. He's like, well, I'm just gonna keep doing the same thing I do, and just forget about uh -huh. it. And he started losing weight. You can't compare yourself to anybody. You can't compare yourself mm -hmm. the way you used to look like when you was younger because you were a different person then. You were a different person then. Mm -hmm. You can picture yourself looking like you did then, I was gonna say. but you cannot feel sorry for yourself. Also, okay, so you have to feel confident in yourself. Yeah, There are a lot of people that don't want to be around other people. It's like, Oh, she's skinny. Uh, no, you cannot compare yourself to other people. Okay. You look good no matter what. That is what you have to see. You have okay. to see that you look good no matter what. And you do look good no matter what. So if you tell That's what your husband did with himself. Okay. He's like, yeah, he had a big old belly. <laughs> but he didn't care. <laughs> Well, so if I do the same thing that I did with my tooth and I just stay positive and don't compare myself, then the same thing will hap yes, happen? Yes, it will happen. It will happen automatically. Uh -huh. You can't be afraid to yeah. show yourself. Okay. You have media on your planet. There I are see. a lot of people yes. that don't want to show their bodies because like, I'm fat now. Uh -huh. Well... So what? So what? So what? <laughs> New York because <laughs> most of the time, if you see yourself at what you look like, that usually makes you kick in right. and want to do something about it. It does, yes. I suppose we could... But there know. are also things that okay. you call editing. Yes. So you can make yourself look like you want true so why are you complaining until you take the pictures and fix it then. right take the pictures that's fix our them. little joke here <laughs> well, you got all that technology mm -hmm. and you can literally make yourself look like you want yeah it's true by just changing it yes so what are you complaining about it's true take the picture and fix, fix it. it but then while you you know while you're doing that you can still fix it in real life yes and then you'll get there, and then you won't have to fix the exactly. picture so much. Okay, gotcha. Thank you so much. That is lovely. Yes. That will make people happy, I think. People do it all the time. People take pictures all the time. Oh, yeah. And they change themselves. They do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And nobody would ever know unless they see them in person. <laughs> yes, yeah, it's true. But if you don't want them to see you in person, then don't let them see you in person. Okay. Either way, you win. Yes, that's true. You and, win. And just keep telling yourself, I win. I win. You win. Yes. Um, I had a question about, <laughs> these are random, I'm jumping from here to there, but crystal skulls, 
what do crystal skulls do? What is the point of a crystal skull? What does it do? The crystal skulls come from the Palladium beings. Oh. They created those. Okay. And they do have power. Okay. They have lots of power. Wow. They have different kinds. They have skulls from different beings. Some skulls oh, look like an alien being. Right, Some right. skulls look like a human being on your planet. That's true. There are different kinds. They have all kinds of power. They have healing powers. Mm -hmm. They have levitating powers. They do have some of those on your planet, and they have found them. That's why they keep them locked up. Found when you say found them, what they found them under the ground, and your government has a few of them, and they know how. Oh, they work. the skulls. Yes. Oh, they so they help you levitate. They use those skulls to control. That is how they have been able to keep all the secrets now too. But it's not going to happen for long because they will be recovered. Yeah. Their power will be taken away. Oh, they will be recovered. Interesting. Yes. They will be taken Interesting. away. Interesting. If you buy a crystal skull, can you use it for to help yourself? If it's crystal in general, mm -hmm. you can make that power your own power. They won't be as strong as the crystal skulls from the other beings. Mm -hmm. but if someone makes a crystal skull out of a regular crystal, mm -hmm. it still has some power in it. Okay. It'll have a little bit of healing power. It won't be as strong as the original crystal skulls from mm. other beings, but it will still work. Okay. Is it the same as just getting a crystal? You can get any crystal. Any crystal. Pretty much any crystal on your planet has power. Okay. And you can utilize that power. If you have a crystal, you can change that crystal into a human crystal just by saying it's a healing crystal. Right. The power of the mind is very strong. Yes. You can give someone a crystal and say, this is a healing <clears throat> crystal. Put it on your heart. If you got a bad heart, put it on your heart. If you make them believe that that thing will work, mm -hmm. it will work. Okay. You're not lying to them. You're convincing them that they can... <laughs> Heal themselves. That's true. It's what you call mind tricks. It's but not the, really mind but, tricks. That is the way your mind's supposed to work, and you're just showing them how to use it to yeah, heal themselves. That's amazing. Okay. This is so great. Um, Kundalini awakening. I have been very curious about what that is and why. Some people have an easy time with it, and some people just are just a mess for a while. It is what you call Kundalini uh -huh. is meditation, but it is a super meditation. Oh. That's when you really go deep and you can heal yourself. The thing you call yoga is actually part of it, meditating. Oh. Yoga helps with everything. That's true bones, your muscles, you can stretch. Yoga and Kundalini are very much alike. Kundalini is a little bit stronger, but it helps. Where did they come from? I think I heard once there was a, a yoga planet or something like that. It's from a Cirrus planet, from Cirrus. Cirrus. And those beings brought it to your planet and... Yeah. Mostly in the east and the uh -huh. Asian areas. And they perfected it and the monks use it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they just passed it around and showed it to everyone. There's a, a girl that I found on YouTube who... She said she went through a kundalini awakening. I'm not sure if she was doing yoga or not, but... She said all these crazy things would happen, and then, and then they'd go away, and she'd be fine. But she has all this knowledge now. It's like it came through super, super fast. Uh -huh. it, is how you, it is how you create. So why, how does that happen, or why does that happen to some people? And it, I guess it's painful, or can be. 
Because Sometimes the energy is so strong that it becomes painful. Mm. It doesn't last very long, though. Right. She, she said it went away. It's, it does, it's not painful for everyone. Everyone is different. Everyone mm. has a different body, so it comes through differently. Some people don't feel anything at all. Right. Do I have <clears throat> that happening? Or? No. You, have, you, you have done Kundalini, and you don't know it. That's no. why you're... <laughs> Talents are coming out. Oh. You don't have to try as hard because you are an empath. Empaths oh, okay. have an advantage over a lot of people. Because when you care, care is light. Is a strong light. Everyone, most people on your planet do not care. <laughs> I mean, it sounds bad, but they don't. Right. But they can still be light beings. Right. Like your husband. Mm -hmm. He's a light being. He is. <laughs> he doesn't care as much, though. <laughs> it sounds bad, but he doesn't. He cares just enough to help people, but it doesn't occupy his mind as much. He cares just right. enough to say, oh, I'm sorry, I can help you a little bit. But that's about it. You are gifted with patience because you're an empath those are very strong teachers so you have a lot of power you actually have more power than you think you do what causes panic attacks the panic attacks is you overthinking <gasps> You do not need to overthink. You will be able to fix whatever. You do not have to give in to the fear. Panic attacks is fear. Yes. There is never nothing to fear. Yes. So you should not panic. Okay. If something comes at you and you feel like you're having a panic attack, do not fear it. Push it away and say, I do not need this in my life right now. And it will go away. It will go away. Okay. And you will be able to fix whatever the panic attack brings along. You can fix it. Okay. Panic attacks is what you call a state of mind. If you are not afraid, then you will not have any panic attacks. So don't be afraid. Do not be afraid. Fear does not exist. Fear does not exist. Thank you. The last thing I had a question on was what is the oversoul? What is that term? Or does it mean different things to different people? That is a made-up word on your planet. Okay. I wasn't really sure. Like, what the difference The oversoul are. is basically your soul. There is not a different kind of soul. Okay. Uh, that's, that is the one misconception on your planet. People okay. like to make up words. Yeah. But long as those words are for good, mm -hmm. we just let it go. Yeah. I understand that. Long as it's for good, they can call it whatever they want. Right. Is there anything that you would want to tell people for them to know right now? Yes. People that are struggling. I want everyone to know. Everyone that is struggling. We know your government is making it harder for you to survive because of your so-called prices. The jobs are rare. Your housing is getting too expensive to purchase. So everyone is getting upset. I want to do everyone to know that is not going to last long. Stay strong. Think of ways to get around this. We're trying to get it where you not have to struggle to survive. It will happen sooner or later, but you will be able to get through it. Okay. 
Think of the light. Think of your families. Stay positive. Even when someone is going negative in your face, mm -hmm. stay positive because you can fix it. You can fix everything to help you. You will be able to do it. Okay. We have total confidence in you. You will be able to do it. Can we call on you for help if we yes. need it? Yes, okay. they can call on us anytime they want. You can meditate. You will hear us. You will not be talking to yourself. If you hear a voice, it is us. You are not imagining it. It is real. We are talking to you. Even if it sounds like their voice? Yes, even if it sounds like okay. your voice. Okay. You listen to your higher selves. You can listen to us. We will give you the answers. Okay. Thank you so much. Would you like to bring Travis back now? Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, Metatron. Thank you, Travis's higher self. Thank you, Larry.